Nvidia's RTX 2070 was an upper mid-range GPU back from 2017. These days they go for around £170 on new sites like eBay and that's what I paid for this Gigabyte model, kinda. That's because the seller I bought it from put on the wrong size thermal pads resulting in the GPU not properly contacting the cold plate. However, the seller was pretty chill as they offered me a part refund as I had to get some new thermal pads for this graphics card. So today it's going to be performing at its best. Despite the 2070 having eight gigabytes of VRAM, it has a much stronger memory configuration compared to modern eight gigabyte GPUs. Thanks to its 256 bit memory bus, which should help out in memory sensitive titles, as newer graphics cards, which are eight gigabytes, only have a 128 bit memory bus. There's also RT cores present in the RTX 2070, but that doesn't mean you should enable ray tracing as you're about to find out the performance isn't, it, it's, it's not great. Don't enable ray tracing. To see how the RTX 2070 is getting on in 2024, I've tested it at both 1080p and 1440p as 4K was kind of out of the question today. All testing has been done on my GPU test bench, which has an Intel Core i5 12400F, 32 gigabytes of dual rank, dual channel, 3200 megahertz DDR4 memory, an MSI B660-A Pro motherboard, and a one terabyte NVMe Gen 4 SSD. I've applied an undervolt of minus 100 millivolt at 1860 megahertz, and I've also overclocked the memory as well. Lastly, all testing data was gathered on the latest Nvidia driver at the time of testing. So let's see how the RTX 2070 gets on. First game up today is Hogwarts Legacy and performance on the medium preset with high textures across the board was actually pretty decent on the 2070. Netting 85 FPS on average and 55 FPS for the 1% low at 1080p, that is way more than playable and I think a lot of gamers would be totally fine with this gaming experience. And even switching up to 1440p sees the average stay above 60 FPS and the 1% low did kind of fare okay with 41 FPS there so... Yeah, Hogwarts Legacy on an RTX 2070 is not too bad of a performer. Performance also looked great in Fortnite as well, as at 1080p, you're set for a 240Hz experience, getting 284fps on average, and the 1% low was actually very smooth as well, with 183fps there. And 1440p is good enough for a 144Hz experience, with 207fps on average, with a 1% low of 138 frames per second. So Fortnite performs great on an RTX 2070, so if you want to get into some streaming or some competitive play, the RTX 2070 is perfectly fine for this title. Anything Turing or newer does tend to perform pretty decently in Cyberpunk, and that stays true today on the high preset. 80 FPS on average and 64 FPS for the 1% low at 1080p is great performance figures right there and this is what I'd recommend for this graphics card and Cyberpunk 2077. That is because switching up to 1440p sees the average frame rate drop to below 60 FPS but the 1% low at 1440p is also pretty decent. After testing Spider-Man on multiple different configurations, I've come to the conclusion it's actually pretty well optimised and it's not too hard to run. And the RTX 2070 is no exception as 106 FPS on average with a 1% low of 70 FPS at 1080p is excellent performance in my book. Even switching it up to the high resolution at 1440p, 85 FPS on average and 60 FPS for the 1% low is also great on the very high preset. So if you want to play Spider-Man, and you've got an RTX 2070, just know that the performance is going to be excellent. In hindsight, setting Horizon Zero Dawn to its Ultra preset is a very good idea because 83 FPS on average with 58 FPS for the 1% low at 1080p is very good performance. And switching up to 1440p, that average stays above 60 FPS with 67 frames per second there. And the 1% low does also tighten up to the average, getting 50 frames per second. So Horizon Zero Dawn, excellent performer on the RTX 2070. Another esports game I've got on test today is F1 23 and performance on the high preset is uh, it's okay with 124 fps on average with 106 frames per second for the one percent low at 1080p 
That isn't terrible performance, but in a racing game like F1, you're going to want as many frames as possible. So I would recommend lowering it down to medium, perhaps. 1440p sees the average drop down to double figures with 97 FPS on average, but the 1% low was very close to the average with 83 frames per second. So performance is not too bad overall, even though I'd recommend using a lower preset because F1 23 is a racing game. Despite it being almost three years old, on the Ultra preset, Forza Horizon 5 looks absolutely incredible and performance today is exactly the same. That is because 75 FPS on average with 61 FPS for the 1% low is pretty decent performance at 1080p. And the scaling at 1440p doesn't seem to really affect this card that much as the RTX 2070 got 63 frames per second on average there with a 1% low of 53 FPS. So if you wanted to play at 1440p and have a somewhat console-like experience, I mean the performance is absolutely great here. God of War and Horizon Zero Dawn tend to have similar performance to each other and that stays true today. On the Ultra preset, the 2070 pushed out 76 FPS on average with a 1% low of 57 frames per second. And switching this up to 1440p sees a still a decent gaming experience with 64 FPS on average and a 1% low of 50 frames per second, meaning God of War is perfectly playable on both of these resolutions. And to be fair, the RTX 2070 is a totally fine GPU for this game. That rounds off the rasterization benchmarks and we're moving into the ray tracing benchmarks and I'm going to gloss through these pretty quickly and that is because it's not really that playable. Spider-Man Remastered being the only game to see above 60 FPS with ray tracing enabled and this is why I simply do not recommend ray tracing on a lower end graphics card like the RTX 2070. It's simply not worth the performance hit. Cyberpunk 2077 sees unplayable performance at both resolutions, especially at 1440p with 14 frames per second there. That's not brilliant. Hogwarts Legacy is slightly more playable than Cyberpunk though, getting 55 FPS on average at 1080p with ray tracing enabled. And this drops down to 40 FPS at 1440p. So I guess if you were cool with a 30 FPS experience, I mean the RTX 2070 can do it, but I highly recommend not enabling ray tracing at any resolution with the RTX 2070. So in the game tested today, the RTX 2070 kind of follows the same path as the RX 6600. That is because in 1080p AAA games, it's still totally fine at high settings for a 60Hz experience, which is great today as Hogwarts Legacy, even though I dropped that down to the medium preset, but games like Cyberpunk also ran totally fine at the lower resolution. Also, you have your esports games, which will obviously run fine on a card of this caliber, with Fortnite getting north of 280 FPS on average at 1080p. So, if you want a 240Hz gaming experience in esports games, the RTX 2070 is totally fine for it. But if you want to raise your resolution in competitive esports games, the RTX 2070 is perfectly fine for a 144Hz experience there as well. Performance like this in esports games is totally doable as long as you've got a fairly decent processor like an AMD Ryzen 5600X or maybe like the 12400F which I use today. So if you want to play competitively, those are some CPUs I'd recommend with this graphics card. Where the RTX 2070 starts to struggle is 1440p AAA games, kind of like AMD's RX 6600. Here you will have to drop to medium presets in games like Cyberpunk and Hogwarts Legacy just to get over 60 frames per second on average. Alternatively, DLSS works brilliantly at 1440p, so you could enable that on quality if you need some performance in a pinch. Like I said in the RX 6600 video, the eight gigabytes of VRAM could potentially become a problem at the higher resolution, as a lot of games these days are becoming very VRAM hungry. But in favor of the 2070, it does have that 256 bit memory bus, so this will definitely help out. Also, you could enable DLSS and quality as well, and that will reduce the VRAM usage. Last and certainly least is ray tracing, and I'm going to cut it short here. Don't bother enabling it on an RTX 2070. It's simply not worth the performance hit. I think ray tracing is still a premium PC gaming feature, and it should be enjoyed on higher end graphics cards, as you can afford the performance loss there. Despite the RTX 2070 being a somewhat decent performer, especially at 1080p and in esports games, there are a few elephants in the room. 
The main one being the cheaper and basically identical RTX 2060 Super. That is a GPU I tested last year on the channel, I'll leave that up there. But it's essentially the same as the RTX 2070 and it will sell for less. That is because a lot of people see 60 and they think it's not as good as 70 and that's just the fact of the matter. Also, there is the 5700 XT from AMD, which is also a solid option at this price point and truth be known, it does sell for a bit cheaper than the RTX 2070. But you are losing out on the RTX features like DLSS and the excellent Turing encoder, which is way better than the encoder on the 5700 XT. However, for that lower price though, you should be able to enjoy better gaming performance as the 5700 XT is about on par with the RTX 2070 Super. Keeping with Team Red, there is the RX 6600, which is a newer RDNA 2 offering, and it should be able to outperform the RTX 2070. Actually, wait with me one sec there. Looking at tech power up and it seems that the RX 6600 doesn't beat an RTX 2070 so that's something that you should keep in mind even though I did pick up the RX 6600 for £160 boxed. At the price and performance point the 2070 is at naturally there are a lot of other competing GPUs in this space. I want to test it against the RX 6600 and maybe my RK750 and even maybe the 1080 Ti, to sort of see how all of these GPUs stack up against each other. And eventually I do want to flip it in a PC build because RTX 2070 should sell like hotcakes in a PC. So then, is a used RTX 2070 worth a buy in 2024? And to answer that, I'd probably have to say maybe you've got to weigh up your options. Do you remember the RTX 2060 Super is basically the same graphics card and it sells for less. And there's also the 5700 XT which doesn't have the RTX feature set and its encoder is not as good. But it does perform similar to an RTX 2070 Super while costing less. But if you can find it for £150 I would say that's quite a good deal. But despite all of that the RTX 2070 is still hanging on in there and its performance is not too bad. So if you want to see how the RX 6600 gets on, there is a video for it right up there and there's another GPU benchmarking video down there. And if you got this far into the video, I'd like to say thank you for sticking around this long and leave a like if you really like the video, it does really help out. So with that being said, I'm going to leave this one here and I'll catch you in the next one.